So this uh, pine squirrel leech, just this little guy here, has been my go-to pattern for lakes out here for quite some time. Uh, ever since I stumbled upon it, it's been absolutely awesome out here. I don't know what it is about it, but fish seem to love it and drives them nuts, and they just can't get enough of it. And uh, this version here, it's you can see, it's has this uh, single hook up front, and this is like a size six I believe I use a size six scud hook for this and it works great um, you know the whole point of this pattern is that you know you get a bunch of free movement from this tail back here and uh, this collar up front is you know really mobile it adds just a little bit more bulk up front but overall it's just a fly that's filled with tons of movement and it's looks phenomenal in the water but the biggest problem is is that you know you've got this big hook up here but you know I was getting a lot of late strikes so they'd grab back here on the tail and you can feel them tug and pull and you know you might even fight one for a little bit before they just completely let go and um, you know get away and you check the hook it's perfectly fine it's nice still sharp and ready to go but um, the back end starts to get chewed up a little bit. And, um, you know, out of 10 strikes, you might catch four or five fish, which still leads to great day of fishing overall, but just because of how effective this pattern is, I mean, you might get a whole bunch more strikes in a day, probably 30 strikes in a day, and catch, you know, 15 fish overall. But, um, anyways. So that was the problem that I was having. So then I came up with version one of this fly, which is just this guy here. So we're getting a little bit better. We have this hook on the back and you know that solves our late strike problem. And I just about every fish that I hooked up with, I caught on this guy and you can see he's already been used a little bit. He's kind of frayed and worn and um, actually went in and repaired this one because uh, um, wraps back here came loose and I'll show you my trick for that later but um, so this was kind of version one just tied on a clip shank and this version works, works exceptionally well uh, if you live in an area where you can't fish our uh, double hook flies like articulated flies stuff like that this is a great option or if you just like the looks of this one better and um, think that it'd suit you a little bit better and definitely go for this one. It's super effective fly and um, just as good as the uh, original and probably just about as good as uh, the next one that I'm going to show you. But um, So this one here, the reason why I design these flies like this is, um, you know, like I said before, the key to the, these fly success is the amount of movement and uh, yeah the amount of movement and stuff that you get out of them so um, back here you know this is completely free moving this is and the leather on this one's a little bit stiff because you know it, I have fished it quite a bit and once it dries out it gets a little bit stiff but you stick it back in the water and it works just fine but um yeah so we have all this movement in here and it's only tied down in this one little spot back here to this back hook so you, know, you get all the movement you want from this and then you have that one little spot that we got to compromise with but no big deal and back here this is all completely free moving so then the final version of this fly so far and I fished this last weekend and it was absolutely deadly out there <laughs> it's probably the best day of fishing I've had and at least two or three years it was phenomenal and as you can see this one has uh, two hooks on it and um, something I've been doing lately too is just adding just a 
little hint of flash and that's just some lateral scale flash and same deal you got all the movement you want out of it and um, but now you have the benefit of two hooks so if it hits them from the front it'll you know get hooked up or if you get it from the back you get hooked up doesn't matter it's double trouble <laughs> so um, absolutely killer little fly and that's one I'm going to show you how to tie right now and um, I'll be honest with you these are just little tube fly hooks and I have no idea what the number is on them uh, quick google search I think they're uh, Daiki 1640s I remember that these were Daiki hooks but I'm not sure at all they've been sitting in my tube fly box for a little while and don't have the original packaging or anything so uh, sorry about that but um, like I said, I believe these are Daiki 1640s, and I believe they're size 6 or maybe a size 4. Um, really, any tube fly hook, anything with a short shank and a big gape, that's what we're looking for. And as you saw, I did um, mash the barb on these. These have pretty big barb, and that was um, one of the big problems I was having with the, um, that original version of the fly, just the shank fly, is that you know, I'd go and try to remove the hook and end up pulling the tail off and um, the, the fly will still work like that. It, you know, I still caught fish on it, but um, not my favorite way to fish it. That hook can wrap around on the um, articulation piece that we're going to be putting in and um, the, the tail gets all fouled up and it's it's no good, so. Um, best way to do it here is we've just got some this is a full size uh, pine squirrel zonker All right, this is a full size one so packaging just like that and uh, natural is hands down my favorite color um, it seems to work best I don't know why but I've tried um, that dark brown color that I had on the original pattern and the uh Olive, and I've tried claret and black and all that. And, um, natural just still seems to outfish them all. So, what I do is just dab a bit of super glue, and this is the key piece to this. You need to you need to put super glue back there. Um, I was doing a little bit of testing, and that one that I was telling you about that the tail broke off of it. Um, I did not put any super glue on. You know, because I, I normally make a few versions of flies and um, fish them for a while and just see how they hold, hold up and see what I can get away with. But um, when I did not put any super glue on this back piece, I just, you know, one or two wraps of thread and see if I could get away with that. But um, what I found, you need to put down some super glue before you put that zonker down. And you need to do it before because you really need that zonker to stick in good. And it's about four or five wraps of six hot thread, at least six hot. Um, you can do like GSP, something like that, but that's a little bit overkill. And um, also, I could have been used GSP on, uh, you know, spun deer hair flies and stuff like that. But overall, I just I really don't like to work with this stuff. So if I can not use it, I prefer it. So it's gonna come in, lift this up and do a little whip finish up front and that is pretty much the back half of the fly right there um, nice and quick and easy and overall this pattern is really easy to tie um, a great one that you can do and make a couple dozen of them in no time flat and catch tons of fish so next thing that we're going to do here is um, you can use plenty of different things for this but hands down my favorite to do is use uh, this braided fishing line and this is I believe this is 30 pound braid um, I was just peeling it off an old bait caster reel that I got so uh, like 30 pound doesn't really matter what brand but this is like power pro so um yeah, doesn't really matter, but you want good, strong, 
braid braided fishing line and if you don't have braided fishing line and you do have the uh, articulation wire I'm not sure what that's called Let me check here but yeah just a normal standard articulation wire the um, this 19 strand bead line stuff this stuff you can get away with using this but I really prefer this braided fishing line because it's really keeps all that movement that um, the original pattern has and that's the key to the fly I think so the more supple we can get this connection the better so as you see I'm going down because I want this this tag line coming straight off and we're going to do this just like a um, adding an intruder hook to intruder fly so we're going to so this first piece goes down through the eye you come up and around the shank of the hook immediately behind the eye and then we're going to take that piece and this gets pretty tricky but after a while you get the hang of it you just go back up and through and the reason why I want that up there is because I want this connection right up close to this sonker just to kind of help hide and help protect that articulation so uh, that back half is completely done we can set that to the side and then just gonna mash this barb real quick and one thing that I do on all the flies particularly the ones that I'm going to be selling is I don't mash the barbs but um, just because that maintains that option for the end user and the customer to whether they want to mash it or not and you know I'm not here judging you if you don't uh, do catch and release or if you don't mash your barbs or whatever you know fishing's fishing everybody gets all up in arms about that stuff but um, on these ones in particular these hooks are got some kind of huge barb on them so I don't like to leave those on because the first few I you know it took me like five minutes to try to get the the hook out so uh, it's gonna start our thread here and work my way back just above to where that point used to be and all the way back I'm gonna get our back half here and I always like to make sure that those um, strands of the braided line are right next to each other they're not twisted up or anything like that just to be sure that we're not building in any kind of natural twist into the fly so I'm just gonna tie that down making sure that like I said everything's in line nothing's twisted up and just put down a few wraps and then um, you can pull straight forward but if you pull up it's a little bit easier just pull up we're not looking for much space between these maybe you know half an inch from the end of the thread to the, the eye um, we don't want this pattern to be super huge um, you know we're essentially trying to imitate a leech you know this pattern does an amazing job of imitating a lot of different things in the water but uh, you know you want something small and kind of bait fishy slash uh, you know leech size so that's going to be you know right around two inches to you know bigger ones being two and a half so I'm going to keep it fairly small here and as you saw just a little bit of super glue down there before we bring these back uh, this braided line is really slippery stuff so I at least like to go back over once um, even better go back three times and you know it sounds like a lot and you do end up building a lot of bulk that you know really doesn't need to be there but um, better safe than sorry if you have a this fly and it falls apart on you you won't be a good chance to fish it at all so always a good idea just to go over and just clean all that up that's three times over and um, one trick that I picked up man this was 
back from my gear fishing days and um, even works great now is a razor blade it worked 10 times better you get 10 times cleaner cut than anything else just come in there and just like that if you try to use scissors and even the super braid scissors and stuff you end up with frayed ends and it takes a few tries and all that and not worth the time so just a little razor blade sneak it in there and easy easy all right and this is probably the hardest part of this fly um, we want to keep tension on this but we don't want to put much tension on the zonker strip because the zonker strip will stretch and if we tie that down so say we stretch it and tie it down and then we're done right there and then when we let go see that so but if we don't put enough tension on it we're going to wind up with a big bubble back here so um, easiest way to put tension on this gently lay it down and then I like to kind of figure out where that bead ends and then separate the the fur up here and then trim this out and you can just tie down right on top of it that's a, normally what I would do but this way you just get to lay that down right on top and see how we have just a little bit of that leather sticking up over the bead what we can do is jam that under the bead if we can get it and what that does is it helps create some bulk inside of the bead not just behind it so that way you know when we go and fish this and bang the bead against rocks and all the paint chips off of it and all that the bead itself won't get set back against the hook and start unraveling all our uh, all our thread wraps and eventually the whole entire fly so we want to build up a little bit of bulk inside of there not just behind it all right and we're just going to cover all that up and see that nice nice articulation that we got there you know it's not a big bubble and like that and we're not you know pulling the hook way up there just nice and flat and straight and the zonker strip is right against the braided line like we want and we're good to go all right i'm just going to keep on covering all that up and the next step here um I haven't really started doing until recently and it seems to have worked really well. Um, looks like I lost my piece of this. So I just got a some lateral scale. This is just like Flashaboo but it's got a um, as you can kind of see there kind of horizontal I guess because it's be vertical. Got some lines in it and kind of gives the impression of scales or something so um, anyways works really well this is just kind of like a pearlescent kind of opal color I'm just going to tie that down one strand on each side seems to be enough um, and really you can do any kind of flash that you want in this um, I've got a few tied with the uh, um, UV crystal flash and like the UV pearl I think it is crystal flash and um, trying those out and I'm gonna try some out with you know plain colored crystal flash and all that but just gotta figure out what the fish like but so far they seem to really like this just kind of trim that just a bit short of the tail um, see it almost in line with the back of the bend of the hook of the last hook and then um, next thing that we're gonna do is you can go ahead and use this a uh, same plain normal uh, pine squirrel zonker strips but what I like to do for the collar of these flies is go with the micro um, again completely this is my preference this is what I like to do um, you know these packs aren't necessarily cheap for what you get they're like five bucks each which I mean it's 
fairly cheap. I mean, I can't be complaining about five bucks for quite a bit of good material, but um, what I like to do is use these micro because see how thin that the leather on the zonker is, so that way I can fit in more wraps, get more bulk, get more fibers in there, and thus, you know, more movement out of the fly. But um, a lot of them just for the speed of tying, and just because, you know, I have way more of the normal, and this takes up more space with less wraps, and I can get away with all that. Um, plenty with the, the normal normal zonker strip but this way just looks better so um, again completely up to you just kind of tie that in right on the side here and again this fly is full of super glue it's probably the key piece to this fly I mean, it, it really holds everything together you can get away with a lot with uh, good thread wraps and all that but um, this super glue is just extra assurance that nothing's going to go anywhere and we're going to have a solid fly because um, like I said in my last video um, it's I like to fish my flies right up next to cover and this is no exception this is an absolutely awesome fly to go up next to weed beds and just strip around over there or you know keep it close down to the bottom near all the big rocks and you know little bits of structure and stuff like that fish it there and um, really great fly all around to be pushing up and you know hard areas to fish and the more fish that you catch on this thing you're gonna be more of a believer and it's not gonna fall apart because of all that super glue and you can fish it up wherever you want because it's a quick tie and you know it has a lot of, bit of that durability built into it and, um, there we go. overall um, droop glue is important to it I guess that's generally what I'm trying to get at but anyways just coming up to this front and um, as you saw what I did back there, I'll do it again just for sake of showing you because this is a great little trick. Um, just don't want to completely unwrap it. There we go. Alright, so what I do is when I get it right up behind that bead and I'm making sure that I can fit in every single last wrap that I can right there, what I'm going to do is come up with my thread, come across the zonker, I'm going to pull down tight, I'm going to pull this straight in line with the shank there. So that what that's doing is it's making that piece that I have to tie in as small as possible. And um, what I might be able to do, um, we got quite a bit of bulk underneath that bead so I'm not sure if I might be able to get away with it with this fly or not. But that just gives you, see if you can see that there, see the little tiny tag in, that's a whole lot better than trying to tie off this sonker, you know, around the bead and, you know, you end up with a whole bunch of bulk up there. So if you just take that and put a 90 degree bend in that sonker strip and keep tying it off that way and don't be afraid to take a couple wraps behind and a couple wraps in front and really secure that down. Because this little guy here, even as it is, we should be able to cover that up with uh, just thread wraps. But um, what you can also try to do is just kind of grab onto it, take a bite out of it with the thread. Just kind of stick it in the thread and then pull it down really tight and try to cinch it down into the bead. And you can also kind of mess around with the bead a little bit. and push it to one side or another and try to get that thing to suck down into the, the bead itself 
So all we're going to do here is just build up a little bit of a thread band back here. And that's just to help push all these fibers back because, I mean, try as I might, I cannot find cross cut of these. So I mean, that's the best thing you can do. I don't even think that they would ever make those. But, um, yeah, so just build up a little bit of a thread band just to build in, again, a little bit of durability. Try to keep everything tight against that bead try not to get that bead to push back any so it's going to build up a little bit of thread band um, that's going to push back all these fibers up here and keep that bead in place all right and I'm just gonna again break out the super glue put some glue on my thread and really make sure that you get all these fibers out of the way And just cover that whole thread base with super glue. And then we can take our whip finish tool here. And just get a few wraps in. Pull it real tight. And flip that out. And that's essentially the fly right there. Um, absolutely killer in the water. This this tail moves like you wouldn't believe. And Again, just a little bit of flash. Um, you can definitely catch fish without it, but I've noticed, noticed a little bit more activity with it on there. So definitely worth putting on just a little bit of flash, whatever you got. Um, overall, absolutely killer pattern. Um, really, really excited about this little guy. I've caught tons of rainbows, a few browns, and um, hopefully get a chance to try it out on some bass pretty soon. And um, yeah, you know, figure out what what it will and what it won't catch but so far it's been a trooper and um, you can definitely do a whole bunch of variations to this fly and if you guys do definitely uh, show me I mean you could get away with using a uh, rabbit strip and make this a little bit bigger of a fly and um, change up the bead head to gold black you know whatever and um, tons of stuff you can do with it so uh, if you do make any variations or you catch any fish on it, be sure to let me know. I'd be excited to see it. So, thanks for watching.